good morning everyone my name is Wendy Warren and I'm with the Louisiana Restaurant Association and I am proud to present Chef Wee Pham of Yakuza House in Metairie which is conveniently located right near the LRA office so we are very familiar with the menu and all the offerings and we watch at the bar as chef breaks down Wagyu tuna creates masterful pieces of sushi in nigori and we really saw this as an opportunity to bring him to the show with fortune fish and gourmet to do something that we haven't done in a very long time which is do a breakdown of a fish demonstration on the main stage so with that i would like to turn it over to chef we fam and he is going to walk us through the breakdown of this beautiful bluefina brand sustainably raised tuna and cliff hall with fortune fish is going to be here to uh, walk us through and maybe ask some prompting questions all right good morning everyone um as y'all know my name is chef hui uh, executive chef and owner at yakuza house located in metairie Today we're gonna to be breaking down this uh, 90 pound to 100 pound bluefin tuna that's been provided by one of my trusted vendors, uh, Fortune Fish and Gourmet, uh, that's been ranched out of Bluefina. Um, we're gonna be breaking down into a five piece filet. Uh, in Japanese it's called Gomai Odoroshi, uh, which consists of uh, two belly loins and two top akami loins, okay? And uh, the rib cage, okay? Um, this fish has been um, put harvest and done a Japanese technique called ikijimi, where they bled out the fish from the side midline and insert a wire through this hole right here. If everybody see this hole, they put a little wire into the spinal cord to not tense up the meat where it doesn't create uh, blood clots, where it will. Um, make it a longer chef life for the fish and better quality at that too okay so let's get started cliff is going to take over um, and tell you a little bit more about the fish okay so these tuna are raised off the coast of california around the baja area a little bit south going into mexico the coronada islands uh, it's very very pristine waters um, fortune is really big on sustainability and working with vendors uh, and suppliers that work very hard at making sure the next generation can have product as well. So Bluefina um, pretty much goes above and beyond um, with their sustainability uh, and the traceability of the tuna. Each tuna comes with a tag. Uh, it is numbered so that the customer can actually trace it back to the date that it was harvested. Uh, this fish was harvested a day and a half ago, but um, and that will take you to the website so that, that you're able to learn more about. Also, you can do that probably with the little signs up front if you want more information. But these fish are raised with natural feed; they're not fed with pellets. Um, they they catch the natural feed that's in that area, and uh, and they're. They're fed those in pens kind of that they're raised inside yeah. of the ocean. Right. Now we'll be here for a little bit, as you know, um, while Chef's cutting this up for the demonstration purposes. Oh, but after he finishes, our booth is just right there, uh, 1519. We will be taking the cuts back to our booth. And then Chef and then our Chef, Shinobu Yamayoto, uh, who is also a Fortune employee, um, been with us a very long time. Um, Ready? They will be creating some opportunities for you guys to sample the tuna. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to answer something I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. But I know they're caught small, they are caught live, and they're putting these pins and then they're fed this natural feed until they get about this size. Not sure how long that takes. Now, we're going to have to flip it. Okay? Now, personally, myself, I was 
one of the owners of New Orleans Fish House. And then one year ago, Fortune Fish and Gourmet purchased us. Got it. And uh, this was one of the Ready? suppliers Ready? that we were able to pick up as New Orleans Fish House. We did not even know about them. Yep. So, uh, yeah, flip. Yes. It's been a great opportunity for us to have another product that's farmed. We all know we want to support local fishermen and wild, and we do that as much as we possibly can. Um, the industry, unfortunately, is mostly fishermen that are up in age, and you get it to 100 degree temperature four days in a row. I know three of our fishermen just said, I just can't, I can't go. You know, we had good weather, but other than when I say good weather, no rain, no wind, no, no, no bad seas, but just really, really hard to work in those conditions. So we are looking for other alternatives that are farmed, uh, that are sustainable, that provide good quality, because we all want to eat, right? Like that's something most of us do three times a day. And so that protein that we provide has to come from somewhere so we do go to farms uh, as well yeah they're 20 to 20 to 35 pounds to the harvestable size I couldn't give you the exact time don't know Very stable, yeah, yeah. It, it since we've been using them as a vendor, you know, for a little over a year now, we've not had any increase whatsoever. So a whole fish is in the seventeen fifty range, and your cuts are twenty five, twenty six dollar range. The toro on a fish this size is not separated out and sold just as toro, so it comes with the bottom loin. So, but it's still. In, in, in wild, uh, and we buy, I buy one to two wild bluefin every week while they're available, because there's also a demand for that as well. The mirror shifted. Okay, y'all give me some help. Yeah, down. A little bit more. A little bit right there. Tighten up the other knob on the other side, too. Uh, don't don't pull the mirror up oh, now pull the mirror right there but again you'll notice once chef starts making these cuts even though the the toro part which is the belly part and chef can kind of once he gets, he's concentrating on cutting right now, but once it's cut, he can kind of describe how he uses each of these pieces. But the fat content is amazing for a fish this size. In the wild, you never have this kind of fat content in the belly section and the toro part. So Cliff, that was the question I was gonna ask. If you could talk a little bit about tuna grading and um, how it differs between wild caught fish and farm raised fish. So the grading would, pretty much be the same, except for we're gonna always end up with a one plus from the farm, right? Because there's never gonna be caught online on the boat time, travel time for the boat, because a boat cannot go out and catch one fish and just come back in. Uh, a tuna boat goes out, you're looking at a 25, minimum thousand dollar investment for fuel, ice, food. They're going out there for you know over a week. So it's a, and it's a business. So they have to go catch enough to make enough to come in. When you do that, you get fish that are caught on the first day that are on the boat for seven days. And those fish are gonna be a lower grade just because of age. There's nothing wrong with the fish, but it's not gonna be a one plus quality like this fish that's been out the, the, the water for 30 hours. So we have people at docks that grade for wild and then what will happen is when they come in I will get a picture of a tail cut and a center core 
that we can we can pull with a with a stainless steel rod basically and see about that much of the loin in two different directions so I know going toward the tail and going toward the head and so then we'll match up that core sample with the tail cut to make sure that that fish is the same coloration all the way through because the last thing I want to do is buy a fish for a lot of money that looks like a one plus I get it to the shop I've made my deal captain's free cut the fish and then the bottoms heated uh, which could happen and so then I then then I take a big loss but yeah this fish like this is one grade it's just the, then what they feeding on and then the movement a tuna is a remarkable creature um, in the wild uh, and there there's videos of this um, National Geographic right gotta love them but the larger yellowfin and bluefin will at so let's take a full moon a lot of fish are caught on a full moon reason being is that if you've ever been in a swimming pool at nighttime and you look up any light just is magnified right so if you're somebody you were with was in a on a raft and got in between you and the light there would be a shadow from the bottom looking up because it's blocking the light that's how these fish feed swordfish as well so on a full moon they're at 20 30 10 feet and they're following the moon and so when they see a shadow they automatically know that's bait and so I've seen videos of yellowfin and bluefin the adults taking and start to do circular motion around the, the ball and just continue to do that and then what happens is the bait ball shrinks and then the juveniles feed from the bottom up and they let them eat first so they'll they'll hit that bait ball the juveniles first no right no no they're in pens right so you're going to accumulate a lot more fat which is desirable actually for consumer Hello. All right. So we just took off the top loin. This one right here is usually consists of a lot of akami, which is the leaner part of the bluefin tuna. Um, this one uh, is probably one of my favorite pieces, just because it's right between the fat content of old toro and uh, akami. The belly loin right here is usually consists of the old toro, the belly section, which is a uh, Probably you could call it the wagyu of the sea. There's a, <laughs> there's a lot of fat content in this one, really good. Everyone usually really loves these at uh, sushi at restaurants. The best of the best experience that you can have with the, the belly. Um, chu toro, so it goes from old toro, chu toro to akami. Those are the three parts. And chef, oh. what would you use those three parts for, like <laughs> if you're putting together if somebody was uh, usually coming. I, I love to pair it with truffle um, the otora uh, usually with a little bit of truffle pate um, we also like to pair it with Japanese siso leaves which is a, a perella leaf um, it has a little minty flavor to it, it brings out a little bit more aroma for the, the tuna um, in that case um, for the akami part the lean part I usually like to make like spicy tuna out of it Add a little bit of mayo or whatnot to kind of butter it up a little bit. Would you use that entire loin then, Chef? I, I would. And uh, I usually go through this probably one day, two days uh, in a week. Probably in a day. <laughs> we Pretty probably amazing. Go, yeah, we go through about two tunas a, a week, easily. And, and as we know, the you know the sushi kind of desire has really grown the last few years. I'd say for us. I've been in the business for 35 years. It's it might be the between the Mexican restaurants and the sushi uh, opportunities really grown so much over the last few years. But for myself to have a chef like Chef Fam here, 
really appreciate the quality of what he's working with. He's willing to pay more. Like this is this is more than what a wild bluefin would go for. Now with the wild, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it 12 months out the year. Those wild bluefin migrate. It's mind blowing. So the largest spawning ground for wild bluefin is the Gulf of Mexico. And so they come into the Gulf around February and then it will make it to June, July maybe. And then that same tuna will then head back out through the Gulf Stream around Florida and go back to Canada. And that school of bluefin I will be buying at the end of the year September even now I'm getting it now that I think the waters are so much warmer this year they they went north a lot quicker than they normally would have so the same fish that were in the Gulf in May and June are now in Canada and then they'll move there they'll move the, just a natural progression they'll follow back down into the Gulf for spawning so um, you're not able to get wild bluefin on a weekly basis. It can be hit and miss and then a quality of wild bluefin can really be hit and miss as well. But this, you know what you're getting every time. So for me, as a supplier, while we have to be value minded for our customer, very much appreciate somebody like chef who's willing to say you know what I know I could wild buy wild right now for less money but he's not willing to let you come into his restaurant and maybe find a difference from one week to the other he wants a consistent product so you have a consistent product like Wendy said they're basically neighbors and they know what they're gonna get when they go in there to eat as an owner operator as well I'll just give y'all a little tip on every restaurant you go eat at. If you can eat at an owner operator's restaurant, there's a benefit to that, I'll just tell you. Especially when they're like chef. Now sometimes when we get these, not as much because sometimes we'll just buy the whole fish. But on the larger ones when I'm cutting up pieces and, and handing out, the the bone becomes the most popular the backbone of the bluefin becomes the most popular item in the building we'll have chefs come over with a spoon and scrape the bone i mean it's great meat now i can't invite y'all all over to do that insurance purposes won't allow it but uh but it does happen If you haven't had the opportunity or privilege of tasting the toro or the belly part, um, treat yourself. Especially fatty tuna like this, it's really unique and very, very buttery. Okay, so Chef's going to break down the loin a little bit now. Yes, sir. Uh, we, the best, one of the best pieces of the bluefin tuna is actually called the Kama Toro. It's, uh, you probably could get like four loins out of it, where it's hidden right behind the neckline. You see this part right here? That's probably even better than old Toro right here. These is uh, probably prized, probably $30 a piece at restaurants. Yeah. Now. In the wild, when they cut the head off, they keep that. So we don't actually get that, the way they cut the head off. These fish, because they're farmed, come in with the head on, so we have the opportunity to get it from there.
chef is going on a fishing trip tomorrow. Do you want to yes. tell us about that? Yes. Us? Uh, I had a privilege of having one of my customers come in and offer me a charter trip. So it's been a while that I haven't took a little vacation, so I'm going to maximize up for that tomorrow. We're going to go actually for tuna fishing tomorrow and rest snapper. So a little bit more tuna for the week. Yeah. And you bring in your staff, right? I am, and we're there gonna go, go live on Yakuza House. We're gonna bring all our ingredients out there to uh, actually uh, put on a show on the boat tomorrow. Now, is your are you gonna film that chef, or that can be watched later? It will. Uh, Y'all can be watched if we have signal out there. We'll try to go live. If not, we're gonna record everything that goes down out there, and then uh, probably post it on our our page the following day. You, are you on all the social media platforms? Uh, we are on Facebook. Um, Instagram. Instagram, correct. Um, I have my lovely wife over here that takes care of all my management um, team. Well, I got a feeling that uh, after this house. morning, you're going to have a lot more followers. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. On that. All right, so we're going to break down this uh, belly loin into sections, okay? And these loins, we call it saku blocks. Usually we'll cut it into three sections. You see, y'all guys can actually see this is, uh, this is the bloodline which we're gonna take out in a, little, in a little bit. This is the Akami from here to here is actually called Chu Toro. And from here to here is actually the old toro, the belly section. Now again, we're gonna bring these pieces back to our booth 1519, the Fortune Fish and Gourmet booth that you can, uh, you can touch and feel if you want. Um, and with light, the lighting's not that great. I wish you could see how beautiful that fat content is in that fish yes sir thank you uh, I recently went tuna fishing in the Gulf and I wanted to try a little bit of it off the dock so we had the, the guide just give a little slice right there off the boat figure it'll never be fresher I'll never get fresher fish in my life and it was not tasty it was yeah. it was tough it kind of tasted like water right. same fish a right. couple days later in my fridge was some of the best tuna I've ever had in my life Maybe it was the personal connection because we caught it, but still, yeah. uh, it was a radically different fish after a couple of days. Uh, and I learned that needs to break down and age a little bit. Yes. Is it the same dynamic with a fish like this, or is that a wild caught? Absolutely. Then? The more fat content and the more uh, water you can extract from, just like wagyu, you can do the same with fish. Just as as in my restaurant, we, I guess the perception of uh, whenever you say fresh is always best. Um, there's been a, a new trend where you're aging or curing things, right? Um, we like to try to extract as much water as possible from in our restaurant to uh, make that flavor profile a little bit more intense. Um, whenever you let it sit in the fridge for a day or two, it creates the, the proteins actually and amino acid actually breaks down and uh, creates a little bit more umami flavor inside the fish. Um, that's why lately a lot of people have been dry aging fish. Yeah. Yeah, GW Fins is a, uh, Mike Nelson's a, he's a very good customer, but he's really big into dry aging lots of different types of fish. Yes. Cliff, you said the fish was going to be back at your booth? Yes, we'll bring the pieces once he's finished to booth 1519. Can we touch uh, with our lips? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. So, yes. yeah. So, I don't know if you missed that. I think I said it earlier. Maybe, maybe I didn't, but. Shinobo and Chef is going to actually be preparing some of it for consumption. Yes. yes. Lots of happy people. <laughs> Interesting also, Ian, that I'm um, not sure where you were fishing at, but there's certain times of the year where a lot of tuna congregate on what's called the lumps which is outside of where the river dumps into the Gulf. You know, 
Yeah, well, that's pretty far offshore. Uh, that might not be that. But you can get fish that are in that area. They feed heavily on pogies, and that's really what's brought them in. And the reason it's called lumps is because as a river's dropped sand in the, into the Gulf, it, it literally makes lumps. And so the bait fish and porgies will get inside of that area and the tuna will come and eat and like frenzy feed on it. And I've had fish that were brought to me that were out of the water less than six hours where the rigor mortis had just started setting in. So if this fish sitting flat, so rigor mortis will take that and bend that fish up for about three or four hours and then it will start to relax and break back down touching the ground right so i've had them so where they were in the beginning and stages of rigor mortis that fresh and not be good at all it's just purely because of how they're feeding what they were feeding on and then uh you know tuna if it gets excited it, it can it cr produce some enzymes and it it does affect the meat and it's like this is crazy that a fish could be that fresh and not have any color to it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And oxygen really changes fish as well, like like tuna, it will blossom. It's probably called Otoro because you look at that, you go, oh. <laughs> Super, super beautiful. Right. Some, it some, honestly does, doesn't it? Yeah. Bluefin I carry is really, really good tuna. Uh, I ran through some. I love to support local, you know, uh, as every Louisiana chef does. Um, but just compared to the local golf tuna, uh, some of the golf tuna has a lot of sinuous and it's uh, very bloody. It looks kind of, it could sometimes taste metallic, but. Um, they do a really good job. This company does a really good job on, on this bluefin tuna. That's why I carry it at my restaurant. Two weeks ago, I was talking to Jensen Tuna, which is where I buy the majority of the, the local tuna that we get. And so I was like, Dave, always asking this question around the summertime because we live here, right? And so we don't know if it's one a hurricane. And the last thing we need for a hurricane is have hot water, right? So I'm like, Dave, we were 100 degrees, 100 degrees, 100 degrees, 100 degrees. What is the sea temperature right now offshore where they're blue, where they're fishing for tuna? It was 96 degrees was the surface temperature way offshore. So now, of course, the deeper you go, it's not going to be that hot, but still, it's warmer water. Whereas this is raised in the Pacific Ocean, much cooler water. I, I personally believe that has an impact on the quality of the fish as well. So we'll bring this back. We got to kind of wind it down. So, um, but it, you, you're certainly welcome to come to our booth. We'll bring this. Chef will be over there. Uh, I feel worse for him than I do for me because y'all probably gonna have a lot of a lot of talking. And, and look, this guy's incredible. I want to say thank you again, Chef, for oh, taking the time out of your day and your lovely it's wife to come and to participate in the show and. Hopefully we educated a few people on what's going on and And if you haven't tried Yakuza House in Metairie, yes. get there. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Yes. Thank you Don't wait too late. So can you tell us what you're going to do over in Fortune Fish Booth? Uh, I'm going to do some of my um, most popular dishes over there. We're going to do some old toro with uh, a little bit of house smoke shoyu that we make our own soy sauce uh, in-house. Uh, we usually top it off with a little bit of truffle pate that I like to use. Um, 
We also gonna do this very traditional sashimi style where you just take a little bit of otoro or chutoro or kami and wrap it with that perella leaf that we were speaking a little bit earlier. It's called siso. Uh, and put a little bit of kazami wasabi on top. Uh, that mint leaf, really incredible, it extracts. Uh, enhances the uh, wasabi flavor a li little bit more and uh, you can t actually taste the tuna. Like, brings out the flavor for the tuna for, for the mint leaf, all right? Those are the two items that we're going to okay. be making. Awesome. Thank you, Chef. And on right. behalf of Fortune Fish, thank you all for being here. Thank you, Wendy, thank for giving you. us the opportunity.